time to get the uh, public outreach started. So if everybody's ready to go, we can just go ahead and get it going. Maggie, do you want to do the, the introduction and then I'll follow up with the presentation? Sure. So let me make sure I've got everybody's name here. <laughs> So I'm sorry, are we started or? Yes, we're ready. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. Yeah, so um, we're, this is the uh, McNabb workshop uh, for the complete streets uh, we're in unison with the city of Fort Lauderdale and the MPO. Um, we have Karen Warfel from the city of Fort Lauderdale and uh, Fazal, I'm sorry, Qureshi from the MPO, and uh, I'm Maggie Barshevsky uh, with the Development Services Department, and Horatio Donovich is uh, going to be making the presentation and is the head of this project. Go ahead. All right, well, thank you, Maggie. Uh, good morning, everybody, all those in attendance. Uh, I'm glad that you joined us. I'm gonna try to, to go through a rather short presentation that's gonna give you some highlights of what this project is intended to do. At the end of the presentation, we're gonna have a uh, question and answer session that you'll be able to submit through the Q&A button. And then we'll address some of those questions for approximately 30 to 45 minutes, but I'm going to provide the names and phone numbers of people that you, you will be able to contact after this presentation is over if you require additional information. Moreover, we're going to post the presentation as well as we are recording this event. And Daniel Peruzzi from the Pompano Beach CRA volunteered to help us out on this. So we're gonna, we're gonna, rec that recorder is gonna be posted on the city's website. So you'll be able to relate to this presentation later on. With that, I'm, with, I'm going to ask for your latitude I'm going to share my screen and hopefully everybody will be able to see my McNabb Road Complete Streets Roadway Improvement Projects presentation. Can everybody see it? We can see can it. Can the panelists see it? Okay, fantastic. So as Maggie uh, indicated earlier, this is a partnership between three government agencies working together between the Broward County Metropolitan Planning Organization, MPO, our neighbors to the south in the city of Fort Lauderdale and the city of Pampano Beach. For those of you that are questioning, why are we, the three of us getting together on this project? How come, this is McNabb Road. Who owns McNabb Road? Well, just as a quick intro, McNabb Road is actually owned by all of us. Half of the roadway on the south side is in the city of Fort Lauderdale. Half of the city, half of the roadway on the north side is in the city of Pampano Beach. And this is in the county traffic ways. So that's why there's, there's this little inter interaction between three different government agencies. In addition to that, the Broward County Metropolitan Plan Organization has been helping all of our cities for many, many years to secure funds to build projects like this. And the MPO is going to be the one that's going to be facilitating construction of monies for this project. So I'm going to go over just a few slides and I'm going to try to walk everybody through this project so everybody sees where we are and what does this project entail. This project uh, entails making improvements to, to McNabb Road. McNabb Road goes from Northwest 31st Avenue to the west, all the way up to Dixie, all the way out to Dixie Highway. In our case, this, the project limits are actually uh, from Powerline Road to Dixie Highway in what is called a, a road diet, meaning that we're going, the, 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 the scope of this work is to try to do a lane elimination of an area within McNabb Road that currently has too many lanes. It, it, the idea is to create separated bicycle lanes 
continuous pedestrian zones where there, there may be some gaps in the sidewalk area that we want to reconnect so that we can provide pedestrian connectivity. Eliminate that lane so that we can convert this section of the roadway into a four lane corridor. Add sufficient pedestrian lighting so that people can be feel safe when they traverse the area. Widen the medians so that we can beautify the area and, and, and address traffic speeds and make it use it as traffic calming and take advantage of any landscape opportunities that we might find. Of course, when you have landscape, you're gonna to have to take care of it. And when you take care of it, you need water. So we're gonna to have to put irrigation sleeves and an irrigation, irrigation equipment to take care of that. And last but not least, transit amenities, bus shelters. There's a lot of people that use the buses in that area and we wanna be able to provide for a, a good quality product along this corridor. So we're integrating all of these elements of design into this project. Before you is our renderings of a propo the proposed cross sections. And if you can just follow my crosshairs on the screen, you will see that the roadway will change as it's currently built to a two lane in each direction with a very wide median and a possible uh, separated bicycle lane that hopefully will be striped in green for awareness, or at least we're gonna to try to do that, and nice lush landscape on each side of the road, creating a buffer between the pedestrians and the road. In this next screen, you have a similar view a little bit further out in space, but we're also highlighting the bus shelters that are servicing this area. So buses will be able to pull up, come into an area where people will be able to board their buses safely, which is one of the main reasons to create this complete streets package. In order for us to be able to even move forward with this project above and beyond public support, we needed to know whether this project can actually be done. Are we able to eliminate a lane in each direction and is that going to cause a problem? So we retain a company, Traffic Engineering, to conduct a study that was divided into four sections, evaluating the existing conditions, take account for future traffic volumes, do a lane reduction evaluation, and then come up with conclusions and recommendations. The, the analysis is done such that we can tell what's going on today, what will happen as traffic evolves as population growth exists as the area is redeveloped and what would be the impact of adding all of these new events and all these new things that have happened so far and what's going to happen in the future so and then we have to come up and say well from a traffic engineering standpoint as professionals can we really do this are we doing something that's safe for everybody? Is it something that makes sense? So our traffic engineer evaluated the corridor section from Powerline Road to Dixie Highway and took into account that some, some of these intersections are already uh, managed through traffic signals, including the one at Powerline Road, one at Andrews Avenue, and of course, the Dixie Highway. Then the very next thing that our traffic engineer put together were some tables to give us an idea of what his findings actually are. So he evaluated historical and existing traffic conditions dating all the way back to 2005. He was able to detect that west of Andrews Avenue, the annual traffic, the, the, the traffic counts are in the set the, in the fluctuated between 15,000 to 18,000 and as high as 21,000 in 2006. And west of Dixie Highway, those numbers fluctuated between close to 10,000 to about 12,000 on any given year. So sequently, he just narrowed down the, that analysis into evaluating what is the level of service, the capacity that these roadways can absorb. For those of you that might not know what the level of service means is how many traffic, how many vehicles can actually operate in this area without really causing traffic problems, without causing traffic tie-ups, or without having to wait too long to get from one point to another? And a level of service C is, an, is, a, is a very acceptable level, 
And in this case, it was detected that the existing traffic conditions at peak hour in either one of these segments from Powerline to Andrews or from Andrews to, to Dixie is level of service C, which is acceptable. That means there is plenty of capacity. And in 2019, those numbers were, were acceptable numbers. So now the next step is for our traffic engineer to say, well, what's gonna happen in 2040? 20 years from now, we go ahead and build this brand new roadway. It looks great, but mm, can we afford to do this? What's gonna happen is, is the impact gonna be so bad that we're actually gonna cause a problem instead of bringing solutions. So in his, there are certain formulas that our engineer will use and it is daily volume calculations. He came up with 22,000 trips from Powerline to, to in, in the segment from Powerline to Andrews and about 20,000 from Andrews to Dixie. What does that mean? That technically the level C is not changed in that, in that six lane roadway in 2040. Now, what happens when we go ahead and remove and, 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 and uh, remove those those two lanes? And in, when we go down to a uh, four lane roadway, that volume practically does not change. Why? Because the capacity of that roadway is almost double. That means that this roadway, even in the worst case scenario, cannot cannot can absorb almost twice as many vehicles as it is uh, as are traversing today. So on a peak hour volume, this area can absorb up to 2,100 cars, but it has capacity of 3,400. So the level of service is really not being affected. And by virtue of that, our traffic engineer concluded that based on that reduction evaluation that was presented, the number of lanes can be reduced safely from six to four without degrading safety or the level of service. And those are very good news to us because that means that now we can truly move forward with this project. And now we feel comfortable that someone that has the credentials to defend this project and to tell us whether this is going to be a good thing for the, for the public is actually well defended. So we can rely on that information and now we can begin to move on future steps. So what I wanna leave you with is people that are going to help you answer questions after today, because right now we're, we have limited time, we're sitting in front of the screen, you're there, you took the time to join us, but some of you may have questions after the fact. And you want to reach out to us. And the, the people that you want to reach out to are Fazal Qureshi, who is a, a professional engineer in his own right, works for the Metropolitan Plan Organization, and he's a lead green associate. So he's got the credentials to help you. He uh, works as a project manager for the, for the MPO. And his phone number direct is eight, area code 954 and his office number is area code 954-876-0033. In case you, had, you didn't have a chance, I spoke too fast, let me repeat those numbers. Area code 954-876-0071, that's his direct line, and his office number is area code 954-876-0033. He works for the MPO, and he's gonna be a source to you. From the city of Fort Lauderdale, Karen Warfel is our partner, and she's a transportation planning program manager. She works in the transportation and mobility office for that for the city of Fort Lauderdale, and she can be reached at area code 954 828 3798. Just to repeat it, area code 954 828 3798. And from our beautiful city in Pompano Beach, we have two people that are going to be available to answer questions to you. One is Maggie Barsuski. She's a planner in our, in our serve, the development services department. She can be reached at area code 954-786-7921. Again, 954-786-7921. And I'm your host, Horatio Danovich. I'm the GeoBahn and Innovation District Director with the City of Pampano Beach, also a liaison to the MPO and the City of Fort Lauderdale. And my number is area code 954-786-7834. Please do not hesitate to call us because there will be questions. You might have some, you might want some answers. 
You might want to talk to your fellow neighbors. You might want to talk to your fellow elected officials. And you might want to know why we're doing this, when we're doing this. These are the things that we want to be able to respond to you. Just generally speaking, when projects like this are set out by the Metropolitan Power Organization, you have to figure that the, from today forward, it's going to be at least five years. This is not going to happen tomorrow morning. We're not going to come to your neck of the woods and tear apart your roadways next week. It is a very lengthy process. It has to go through planning stages, through full design, permitting, construction funds need to be allocated and need to be set aside. So what is happening today is simply our first step in the process. So we have a long time ahead of us before the monies will become available. So please don't despair. There's plenty of time to answer your questions and plenty of time to address any concerns you may have. With that, I'd like to thank you for joining us and I'd like to open the session of questions which I would like us to stay available to you for another 30 to 45 minutes tops. And later on, as I mentioned to everybody before, we will be available via phone calls and then through, you know, we're gonna post this presentation on our website and hopefully we'll be able to address any of additional, any comments or any additional concerns you may have down the road. So now I'm gonna turn it right back to Maggie and. Uh, or I don't know, Karen, would you like to add anything? I just wanted to add a little bit more about the timing and um, where we are in the process to expand on what you mentioned for folks who may not be familiar. Um, so this project was identified by our regional transportation agency as an important connection for the region. Um, so we've been working with them in the county and the cities, um, as Horatio mentioned, to is it something we're interested in? Is there potential there? And this is, like he said, the really first step in what can that project look like? So for Horatio really focused on the lane elimination portion, but it, it does go from 31st all the way to Dixie. And there's opportunities for what could be part of that project still because we're in those early stages. So I, I, I would like to, if people have concerns, comments, things that they would like to see, um, I know when we were looking at it, there are really no crosswalks to get across McNabb from 31st to 21st. And if that's something important or you, know, for people who own property or live in that area, you travel the street every day and we may not be as familiar with some of the challenges that that street has. So we would look to you to let us know what those challenges are so that we can consider them in the scope before it goes any further. Um, and then as well as like what Horatio said, if there's, um, concerns or questions or comments about what's been proposed, we would take those as well. But you know, it, it, we're just preliminary. Um, and he said it, it would be five years from now before construction would start. So it's some time yet. Yeah, one, one thing that uh, I want to I want to remind everybody because I think that it, uh, I, I hope I wasn't I, I was clear. But if you have questions, you can type them in the QA section in the, uh, of the Zoom meeting. There's a button uh, on your screen that's QAs. When you click on that, you'll, you'll have the opportunity to type your questions. So now I'm gonna turn it right back to Maggie. Yes, thank you, Horatio. Um, I just wanted to uh, mention, some people have asked about minutes, um, as well as this presentation being available on the website, we are uh, having someone do uh, create some minutes and that will be posted as soon as possible on the website. Excellent. Fazal, do you have anything that you want to share with the, with the public on your end? Yes, sure. So um, um, this is one of the beginning steps of trying to get this project funded. Um, as, as you stated before, Horatio, this is not going to start tomorrow. Um, as soon as we, we, uh, we uh, get the approval from the county, we're going to move this project forward and, and, and get construction funds assigned to it. Um, throughout the whole process, the public is 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 going to be involved in trying to get recommendations on on what the public also wants to see. Um, just the stuff that was presented in this meeting doesn't mean we can't add anything in the future. Um, I, I I think you stated it very well that um, we're going to try to provide um, all the the presentations online, and then just just a one other um, just one other. Thing, oh, um, when you post the presentation online, just also include our email addresses. 
just so if they're not able to get a hold of us via telephone, um, they can they can also reach out uh, via email. And, uh, and and we look forward to uh, hopefully delivering and implementing a successful project in this corridor. Uh, thank you, Fazal. I, I, I am seeing a, uh, a number of questions that have been posted and I, I like to address them right away. Uh, the first question is, will this improve drainage along McNabb to eliminate flooding from heavy rains? And, and the answer is yes. One of, the very, one of the things that we do in a project, we just don't just put a little pavement on it and walk away. We have to analyze localized, localized flooding and we have to evaluate whether drainage improvements are necessary to, to operate that roadway in a safe way and eliminate drainage impacts. So by all means, yeah, that's one of those things that we will do. But if I could add a little bit more, Horatio, um, yes. I know the county through their surtax funding and you know, that penny that we all pay per dollar more um, over the last two years, they are going to be working on the drainage issues in the short term rather than the long term. So they have a project coming up within the next year to address the drainage. And then um, I think they will be adding bike lanes on the roadway as the first phase. And then this project would come in later to add more to that project in the future. But they are really just looking at drainage um, for their project. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Perfect. And, yeah, and if you share, um, Ms. Buckley, if you, if you share, Mr. Buckley, if you share your contact information, um, we can put you in contact with the appropriate person at the county if you'd like more information. Fantastic. Uh, the next question that I, that I was posted um, talks about the many of the, that the proposed changes look very much like the roadway exists today from Northwest 31st Avenue to Northwest 21st Avenue section, which According to this comment, it doesn't, it, it doesn't seem to be functioning very well for the local residents. And if it would make sense to fix some of those issues before adding the same further to the east. Well, so let me address that because they, uh, we're talking about two very distinct sections of roadway that are operating differently and servicing different areas. The section that goes west of Powerline Road, I'm very familiar with because we are currently, the city of Pampano Beach is building a, a fire station at the corner of Southwest 36th Avenue, which is just to the west of 21st. And we had to do some analysis. Well, the existing roadway is already a two lane roadway there. And there, is, there isn't enough right away to make too many improvements. Although I know that the biggest traffic tie ups exist as backup from the traffic signal on Southwest 46th Avenue, also known as Northwest 31st Avenue. That's one of the issues that happens in that area. Later in the afternoon, during peak hour, the lines over there get longer and longer because the traffic signal gives more favor to Northwest 31st Avenue. So we, one of the things that can be done is have a discussion with Broward County Traffic Engineering and have them look at the traffic signal timing in that area and see if there's any adjustments that they can make because there's free flow from Southwest 36th Avenue all the way to 46. So there's nothing in between that stops it. And there is no proposed change to the, you know, to eliminate any lanes in that area. The elimination is from power line to Dixie. So that we're not planning on eliminating any lanes on that side. And yes, we will look at all this analysis and this functionality on the east side of McNabb Road Again, this is only the very beginning. It's just reaching out to you to let you know that we have this project and we're proposing to do it, but we're far from doing the planning and the engineering that is necessary to carry out this project. The next item is a very good question. It's an excellent question about whether the traffic study took into account the Cordish project. For those of you that may not be familiar with the, with the Cordish project, this is the live entertainment project that it is being done by the Cordish family in what is today the Isles Casino, which is going to be converted into a live resort. Interestingly enough, our traffic engineer, TrafTech, worked in tandem with Cordish's traffic engineer, Kim Lee Horn, and developed most, if not, excuse me, all of those traffic analysis for the entire area because we saw that there would be an impact 
not only on Powerline Road by, by, the, by the future development of, of live and the entertainment facility, but what's going to happen to all the other roadways? Racetrack Road is one roadway that will be severely impacted, maybe. Powerline Road would be a roadway that would be severely impacted, maybe. But then you go further south and now McNabb Road becomes one of the few areas, one of the few roadways that you can traverse east-west and perhaps make your way down to South Fort Lauderdale. Well, in this particular case, our traffic engineer took into account this analysis because he already had that data from having done the analysis for the Cordish project. So that was a good question. And I, I, I just want to make sure that everybody knows that fortunately for us, we hired the right guy who had the right information to start with. The next question is, can there be a traffic light at Cypress Boulevard and McNabb to allow cars uh, to exit Cypress during rush hour. Um, okay, anything that comes that has to do with traffic signals has to be evaluated very carefully. And in this type of analysis is done in conjunction with Broward County Traffic Engineering. This is not something that either one of us just arbitrarily selects and says, okay, we're gonna put it, let's put a traffic signal here and we move on, no. We all work together with Broward County because they are the ones that manage the traffic signals in our cities. They are the ones that control the timing. They are the ones that have a specific guidelines on how these designs need to occur. And some of the things that Broward County Traffic Engineering will look at is how many traffic cars are gonna operate in that area? How many accidents have occurred over a certain amount of time? God forbid, were there any fatalities in, in, in those accidents. And is it justifiable to put a traffic signal and slow or allow traffic to flow a little better? So the traffic analysis has to evolve to show Broward County that there is a justification to put that traffic signal there. And we will obviously bring that to our the rest of our team's attention in due time and go ahead through the analysis, Karen. Yeah, I was, I was going to add, I think that's a great comment and it goes with um, what I mentioned that there's no way even for pedestrians to cross in that corridor. And I think the at Cypress Creek Boulevard would make sense because it's about halfway between 21st and 31st. So I think we, you know, we, we should include that as a potential. And as Horacio said, we have to jump through the hoops of making sure that it is warranted and we can do it safely but i think we should include it in our scope i agree okay another question that was posted um by one of our one of our colleagues is with it other than extra space what is the compelling need for this project there are so many other destinations where for people to walk bike to and it's true a lot of people can walk and bike anywhere they want but it just so happens that this particular roadway is a connector east-west and, and thus facilitate activity uh, within a commercial, industrial area and into a residential area. Just to the, just to the west of Powerline Road, there are a lot of residences. And, and it, this would be an opportunity to create a, a passage for people to go east-west that right now it's exaggerated by, the, by too many lanes, too much asphalt that it really has no, does not serve a great purpose. Uh, we all have to realize that when we put an, a, a, a lane of asphalt on one of our roadways, it has to be maintained. It, it's not like it just stays there and nothing happens. We have to take care of them. Whether it is money's coming from the MPO or the city of Fort Lauderdale or even the city of Pampano Beach, they have to be taken care of. If they're not cared for every so often, we have to spend all those taxpayers' dollars to fix it and, and continue maintaining it in perpetuity. So doing things like this, which improve the pedestrian connectivity and creates a more inviting environment will, will help in that sense, but it will also present opportunities for redevelopment. We don't wanna develop areas that just have an industrial look. We wanna be able to build areas that are inviting to the public. And as a live entertainment project is going to evolve in the future in the city of Pampano, it's gonna bring a lot of people that want to be able to work, live and enjoy life in a, in a, in a way that is a little more inviting. People are gonna to wanna to walk in that area. Right now, 
it's not there, but you know what they say? Build it and they will come. That's what we're trying to do. Fasal? Yep. So um, um, for that question on, on, on why we're building or why we're proposing this project in this quarter, um, this project was actually part of a comprehensive plan um, from, from the MPO where we met with all, all different municipalities. We identified um, vital connections that were missing throughout the county and, um, and, and locations where, where, where we needed to increase the mobility. So this is one of the projects as part of a greater um, plan, which, which we developed, which is called Complete Streets Master Plan. And, and, and every year, uh, not just for this project, but for, but for a lot of other projects, we pursue funding for them because eventually we wanna see a better Broward and a, and a Broward that's inviting to anyone, um, regardless of their, regardless of the way that they um, move around the county, whether it's on, on bikes, by walking, um, by, by, by vehicle, we want to make sure that we provide vehicle, provide facilities and safe facilities for anyone who uses any forms of transportation. And this is just one project out of many, many projects that we're pursuing around the county with, with, a, with a lot of different municipalities. And, and, and if you want to see our plan, you can go to um, uh, BrowardMPO.org and then uh, see our complete streets master plan with all the different projects that uh, that we're pursuing that we're pursuing every year. Thank you, Fazal. Uh, the next question is: Will the bike lanes have physical separations, such as planters, or will they just be painted? Um, <clears throat> as of today, you're currently seeing a a um, uh, gene very generic, very brief and very <clears throat> uh, unfinished product of what our vision could be. We have to look into options uh, of whether, you know, planters will create a separation or whether we want to build the, 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 uh, the bicycle lanes with a curb that totally separates them from the cars. It is too early to tell. At the very least, what we want to do is number one, introduce the, the, the fact that we want bicycles to be able to share that roadway. And then we have to look into safety and how can we make that even more inviting? We recognize that people, when are, they're on a bicycle and they have a car driving 50 mile an hour next to them, they'll be very uncomfortable doing that. So Complete Streets evaluates some of these options and, and deals with it. So one of the things that I want to assure the public is that Today, the design is not over. We haven't done the design yet. All offers and all options are on the table. And until we get to that point where we can make that kind of a decision, it's kind of early, but most definitely, we definitely want to look at making this a really inviting area. I mean, painting this, this stripe that nobody's going to use, that's not the intent. The intent is to make it inviting for people to come and use it. Fasal? Yep. yep. So, um, since since for half this project, we are going to be taking away lane. Um, we're going to be looking at different types of configurations um, for the bike lane facility and and also for for the pedestrian facilities that are there. Um, whether that's separating them, you know, with a curb or separating them by by some other means. Um, on the on the western portion, that's west of Caroline Road, we are looking at having a com completely separated bike lane from the um, from the road in that location. Um, obviously, whatever we build, we want to make sure people feel comfortable using it because there is a difference in between what's the standard and what's, what's actually going to make people want to use it. And in, and in our eyes, a comfortable facility is a facility that more people are going to be willing to use. And, and, and it's also going to be a facility where um, maybe, maybe a lot of people feel comfortable driving through that facility, but now they're going to see a facility that they feel comfortable on their bike. Um, that they may decide to use a different mode of transportation for for that one trip, and it and it always starts from getting from one trip at a time, and, and and making sure that people feel comfortable, you know, using what we're spending a lot of money on, and and hopefully this will be a facility that everyone in this chat will that, that everyone in this chat and this workshop will be able to use in the future. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, uh, is asking whether this proposal is associated with any redevelopment plans for the industrial areas east of 21st Avenue. I don't believe that there is a connection direct uh, between this project and that. I mean, Fasal, you can confirm to me, but I don't believe that's the, that there is any connection. No. 
Um, there is none that I'm aware of. Um, and as you stated, um, this may, this project may start those discussions in the future, right, Horatio? Um, yep, absolutely. And in the in the in the roadway projects are a are a great is a is a great mechanism for a lot of redevelopment and rezoning of a lot of different areas. So once funding becomes associated with this project, this may be one of those situations where where there may be redevelopment plans for for east of twenty uh, first. Okay. Um, the next item is outreach should be considered to the business industrial stakeholders to ensure that the drug movement needs of the corridor can continue to be met with the complete streets project. And I assure you, there is no way that we're going to be doing this without them being part of this. I've done several projects in my career where the impact to the business industrial stakeholders and the trucks particularly is really large. And we do not want to impair their ability to continue to operate safely and efficiently. So when, when our traffic engineers, when our design engineers all get together, we will likely have more outreach. We will likely go knocking on people's doors and show them the plans because it is important for them to see what we're planning to do and how will it affect them. And right now, it is still, again, very, very early in the process. But without a doubt, we will we will definitely engage those stakeholders down the road. The next question is very interesting because it's, it's touching me directly. I know there's an improvement project plan for McNabb Road between DC and US-1. And I ha just happen to be the project manager for that project in the city of Pampano Beach. And Karen is a partner in that project as well, although it has no connection to this one. But the important thing, the question is, do we know if there's any plans to put a railroad crossing at Dixie and McNabb to allow for full pass through traffic? And the answer is no. This issue was discussed several times at, uh, uh, at public meetings in the past. To the best of my knowledge, the decision was made not to cut across that railroad crossing for a number of reasons. Now, I don't know if our elected officials and the public will change their mind down the road to today there is no such plan just want to make sure everybody understands that then the next question is what is the plan for the corner of McNabb and 31st uh, someone that lives in the area is concerned that this project will make things worse for them and they have they claim to have seen multiple accidents in the last few months that have caused considerable property damages and we're uh, afraid of the next one causes fatality well let me just make sure everybody understands that when our traffic engineers start the process like we started right now, the only thing that they evaluated is how many cars are going to go up and down. They did not analyze the rest because they have not been asked to do that because we're not at that stage yet. So it's too early to even think that we are going to be resolving every possible problem that could happen in our design every possible impact that will occur as a result of our design. Now, one of the things that is for sure is that the intersection of McNabb and Northwest 31st Avenue is probably not going to change much because we're not taking a lane away from that area. So any intersection improvements that can be made in that area hopefully will be addressed when the project comes. And there's an opportunity to maybe widen the intersection or deal with traffic, but if there's accidents, our design engineers will definitely look at that and, and consider what can be done to, to fix it. And Karen? If I could just add quickly, again, with the Broward County surtax, um, the county is working on design alternatives for that intersection now to do improvements on the short term. Um, so once they get something to share, um, we'll be sure to share with um, the association in that area. We've not seen anything yet, but we have shared the concerns over congestion and the function of that intersection. And um, we have been working with them as well about the safety issues further south at 68th and 31st, um, entering into that neighborhood. And we have submitted a request to the county. Again, um, 31st is another county road like McNabb. And we've submitted a request to the county to look at putting a traffic signal at that intersection. Um, we understand the safety concerns there. And um, as I had shared previously, it is a process, and like Horatio talked about, 
it is a lengthy process to make sure that things are done safely um, and warranted in an engineering manner so that we don't create a, an unsafe situation with the solution. Um, the county leads that process for us. So they do the traffic counts and the traffic studies to really understand what's happening first before they start designing. And unfortunately um, for our region, because of the traffic reductions due to COVID and people working remote, the real sense of what's going on in the streets, we haven't been able to um, do those counts to understand. And we don't wanna do counts when there's not the normal traffic rates because then everything will come back that it's not warranted. Um, so the county is waiting to do those traffic counts. This that 68th and 31st is on the list for them to look at. Um, and then as well at McNabb and 31st, they're already working on it. So as soon as they start doing counts again, we'll see more improvements happening as well. Thank you, Karen. Uh, the next question, the, the next uh, comment appears that, that uh, probably I didn't provide a, a good response regarding fixing the issues that are already in place. Well, and that apparently the neighborhoods to the south of Magna have submitted comments already. Cut through traffic is an issue and speed is, a, is an issue and that is not regularly enforced. So let me address that a little bit in a couple of ways. First of all, let me start with the with speed. When we do this kind of projects, we have to consider speed and speed limits and so forth. Some of the way, when, when you eliminate a lane, you automatically are reducing the space by which vehicles can actually drive and particularly drive very fast. You're giving them less room to roam. If we put a median, medians that are well landscaped and, 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 and lush have the tendency to be deterrents for speed. In addition to that, it is a question of how wide these lanes will turn out to be. We know that we have to provide space for buses, so we know that are restricted to the minimum width that those lanes can have in certain areas. But we and we also know that we're going to put bicycle lanes. So all of these are all going to be intertwined into our analysis. We cannot fix everything today. Number one, because we haven't even started. All we are doing right now is just reaching out to you and letting you know that we have a project that is actually going to start doing all these things. They're going to start evaluating conditions, localized conditions, as well as regional. Now, cut through traffic is a serious problem. We all know that, we recognize that, and unfortunately, we are limited to the things that we can do because McNabb Road, for example, is one of the few roads that actually goes all the way. So it's not like you can cut through uh, Pompano Park or, or Racetrack Road to do the same thing because you're limited. You can only go so far. McNabb Road is one of the is, the is the only road that I know that reaches all the way to 31st Avenue outside of the major boulevards in that area. So you, all the way you have to go to Cypress Creek Road or you have to go all the way to Atlantic Boulevard. Again, so you're very limited and, and then people want, you know, want to go places. So the traffic behavior, the vehicular behavior is not something that we can control 100%. What we can do is try to, 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 to create designs that are conducive to safer and uh, safer environment, account for pedestrians use, account for vehicular use, bicycle use, trucks, and try to integrate it all into something that hopefully gets a common denominator, a safer way to go from point A to point B. Now, I can assure you that by doing all of this, we're going to get traffic off of McNabb Road. I can't do that. I, can, I would never be able to promise you that because the only way I can do that is I have to close McNabb Road. That's the only way you can do that. Other than that, so long as the road exists, people will find their way and they'll use it any which way they feel like. It is it's only a question of how inviting we make it so that everybody enjoys it, not just one. And in terms of speed, when it comes to speed, the other thing is we need Broward Sheriff's Office or the police department to help us out control that. Unfortunately, this is, is beyond our control. We, neither one of us is capable of going to a place and giving somebody a ticket because they're speeding, but we can definitely pass the word around to those that have the authority to control that. And that's something we will definitely do. The, the other question this is a very interesting question. And unfortunately, I don't, you're not gonna like the answer. How many accidents does it take to get a traffic signal? That is a very, very, unfortunately, a very bad question that I cannot answer because 
there is no set number. It is a number of uh, pieces that fit into an equation, not just necessarily accidents. Some accidents are nothing. Could be just a minor fender bender. Some accidents could be very, very bad, could, could lead to fatalities. So when they're all integrated into the analysis and we present it to the authorities that have the ability to make a change and put a traffic signal to dual control, it is that time when they evaluate all of this, they have to look at it holistically. They can't just look and say, okay, if we get more than 10 accidents on this corner, let's go ahead and put in a traffic signal. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. A recent case that I, uh, I, I worked on for almost 10 years in Pampano Beach at the intersection of MLK Boulevard and Northwest 27th Avenue was a project that took more than 10 years to get a traffic signal at that intersection. 200 car accidents, two fatalities. So, and I'm giving you straight numbers because these are numbers they are well, very well documented, but there were, if those were just not the only defining elements on that equation. There was a lot more than that. And when the county makes a decision and says, yes, let's put a traffic signal there is because they feel confident that that is the proper solution for that intersection. Traffic signals are not necessarily 100% the solution to everything. I just want everybody to understand that. Um, there, the next point, I think uh, actually Karen touched on this. There's bike lanes on 21st of the 31st section are appealing, but there are no pedestrian crosswalks, of course. That's one of the things that we definitely want to look at because if we put sidewalks and people cannot cross the street, that, that's not really helping the cause. So we're definitely going to look at that. Um, then we have somebody, we have support for sidewalks for pedestrian safety. And uh, Mr. Buckley provided a phone number to be contacted. Karen and Fasal, if you don't mind taking note. And. Um, and, and it looks like I'm still not inter not understanding uh, this this person's comments regarding how to keep traffic on Mac now versus cutting through narrow pedestrian field but residential if, roads. If I could just chime in, uh, Mr. Buckley, there's a number missing in the phone number there. If they can just put it in again. That would be great. Yeah, and re regarding the 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 cut through traffic again, I, I I've done enough work in our city here in Pompano with cut through traffic where we want people to go to a certain place and not go through somebody's you know residential area where there's kids playing on the street and blocking driveways and cutting through private property. We recognize all of that. It's not that simple. What we do is we try to look at, we have to look at the entire neighborhood holistically. In this particular case, removing the lanes on that section of McNabb Road is really gonna have no impact on what people do within the residential roadways. Because the impact to traffic to McNabb Road is not significant. So it's not really gonna change that pattern. Again, the only way that you can address that, you have to do what is called a neighborhood traffic study neighborhood traffic analysis and see if you can change the dynamics of the roadways within that neighborhood but don't forget though you when you change that dynamic you're changing it for everybody not just those people that are cutting through traffic and more often than not the people that are actually cutting through traffic live in the neighborhood not necessarily come across very few people will take a a, a little roadway to go to say to Fort Lauderdale or to go north towards Deerfield Beach because they'll save about a minute or two. Not a, not a lot of people are going to do that. People that traverse up and down the county don't really spend a heck of a lot of time going through little streets. But point well taken, in due time, we're going to try to address it. We're going to try to look at it. We do not want to exacerbate an existing condition to the neighborhood by any means. We want to make sure that we improve it. So point well taken, we're gonna look at it, see if there's a, within this, our project, we have the ability to address it a little more, Karen. And we're hopeful that, or I'm hopeful that the work that the county will do on the signal at 31st and McNabb will help with some of that. Um, we've seen, if you make the arterial, that main road easier to travel through, people will be less tended to divert 
as well as, you know, we've really been significantly impacted by Waze. Um, when Waze came out as an app for people, it directs people through local streets and neighborhoods. And we've seen other projects where um, their traffic tripled the year Waze came out um, because it's directing people through their neighborhood. So we, we understand that challenge and um, the intent is to make it better, not worse with this. Um, but you know, Donna, we can talk more. I know you've you've talked with my director on some of the challenges, and um, I'll reach out to you to talk directly about some of your other concerns in that area, so we can make sure to address them as best we can with this project. All right, fantastic. Uh, that was the last question on the list, and uh, so I'm going to assume that we don't have any more today. But of course, you're invited to contact all of us, any one of us at any time down the road. The project, as we said several times, is only just the beginning. So what I like to do is a couple of things. First of all, I like to ask Karen, see if she has any last words for our audience. I'm not just thank you everybody for taking the time out of your day to listen to us and participate and add comments. Like Horatio said, you know, we're, we still have a little time to put together other ideas. So if you have things that you forgot to say, um, please reach out to one of us and share any potential elements that could be included in this project. Thank you, Karen. Fazal, you have any last words for our audience? Um, no. Um, um, there will, uh, uh, once funding gets assigned to this project, there will be at least two more, a minimum of two more opportunities for, for any types of public comments and, and public um, and public input regarding some of the improvements that we'll be making. And also also um, possibly five years from now when we're able to um, move this project forward, um, hopefully, hopefully a lot of these issues will be addressed with a lot of projects that Broward County is doing um, with, with the surtax funds that they're getting because there's that, um, just, uh, just like what Karen said, there's a project at McNabb in 31st, there's another project that goes on 31st. So hopefully all those improvements when they all come together will um, like, a, like a lot of these concerns will be addressed just through some of our other um, local agency partner projects. Thank you, Fazal. Maggie, do you have any anything else you wanna to add to the audience? Uh, no, thank you, uh, Horatio, that was very well done. Uh, I just wanna let people know that this is on the website and also if you have any questions, uh, the contact information is also there. So you can contact us with those questions. That's Could it. Can you maybe put up the contact list for a minute or two? So if people oh, need to grab sure. that information again. By all means, by all means. Hey, people could take a picture of it. Yes, yes. All right, so that's the, uh, that's the screen. I like to take the opportunity to thank all of those individuals that have taken the time to join us for this past hour. I know there's some elected officials that have joined us and I want to thank you for, for, for being there and supporting us. And I want to thank the public for your questions. And I also want to uh, thank Danielle Peruzzi from the Community Redevelopment Agency in Pampano to help us host this event for you. For you. And with that, I'd like to wish everybody a great holiday season and we'll see you soon. You be safe. Yeah, you.